Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about ECC memory. What is it and why do you need it? Now a number of you must have seen these days that a lot more NASes are arriving, particularly even for home users at 5 to 8 bay, that include ECC memory, or at least the option to include ECC memory. And I'm not just talking about Synology and QNAP, I'm talking about the lot. I've seen more dro I've seen some of the older Drobos involve ECC memory. I've seen Asus still start talking about ECC memory, and I've seen the Buffalo NAS series largely all feature ECC memory. So what the hell is ECC memory and should you care? Right, well ECC stands for Error Correction Code, or Error Correcting Code, depending on what side of the water you live on. And what that means is, in short, and we will go into details, is what it, it, all the data that you deal with has to pass through the memory. The memory is kind of like a set of hands that keeps passing stuff along. All the information, all the data going back and forth, and that is a very crude analogy, I'm aware of that. But it carries data along. And when the memory hands all this data, data is formed in bits. The little zeros and one, the binary that we talk about and we see in the movies and running down in green in the matrix all the time. And what that happens is these little bits are all handed and pushed together and they become uh, bytes or words as some people call them for some bizarre reason. And they get handed over and over. So here's the data that's being delivered and I'm putting it over there. Maybe it's a read or write operation but one way or another the memory is handing data back and forth all the time. Now what ECC memory does is when it sees these, this string of bytes coming along, and a, classic, a good example that everyone highlights is one, if you go for the one that's on the screen there actually, 10110001. That's a nice string of zeros and ones, uh, like eight lined up bits there. So that's a word or you know a byte being handed over here. And what ECC does is pop another number on the end there. It pops on a zero, right? Maybe it's a one, but zero, but for now we'll say zero. And what that does is create something that we're going to be a bit crude here and call that the parity. Now, anyone that's watched my videos on RAID will know that what parity is, is a blueprint of all the other data. Um, it is kind of like a little map that shows you all the other data. And in the event in RAID terms, in RAID, when you've got multiple drives and data is written across the drives, you have four drives and it'll go data, data, data on the first three and on the last drive, it puts a little blueprint of the data of the other three drives. A little tiny electronic stamp, if you will, or a scan of that data. And the next time, the next wave of data comes across, it does it again, writes data on three disks, but the parity is now moved to a different disk. So it goes data, data, parity, data. Next one, data, parity, data, data. And it just does that all the time. And that way, if one of your drives fails in a RAID, the parity data can be used to rebuild all your data. In ECC memory, it's a little different, but the general um, theory is the same. As the data comes along, you've got your string of eight um, bits come along there. It pops on another one there, that sense of parity, and then it's moved along. But when it reaches the other end of the handling, what happens is, and this is where the memory takes over, it checks, it creates another parity there of the data it's received. And then it compares both the parity. And that is what ECC does. The memory looks at the two parities that have been created at the beginning and the end and then compares them. And if there's a difference between the closing parity and the beginning parity, it then copies the beginning parity. It completely repairs itself, it heals itself with every string of data. And I know this is infinitesimal tiny we're talking here, but ECC memory isn't designed to stop the memory breaking the code. It is there in case the code has been damaged along the way by all the other hardware, by temperature, lots of hardware, and indeed software problems can affect the bits and bytes of your data. And what ACC does is it creates that parity at both ends and then compares them and then repairs itself. A lot of the time, you won't even know that there was a problem because ECC will repair it. And that goes all the way along that. Who would use this? Because this is so small. I can understand that so many of you out there would be like, what? We are talking literal bits of information, tiniest amounts of information. It will be like getting a book and one of the R's in the entire book turns out to be a T. It's not a big deal to a lot of you, but 
there are industries where this information is hugely, hugely important. And it's one of the main reasons that things like blockchain have really taken up with their whole long distance encryption system. And that is financial systems. And indeed, anywhere where your data is so integral that data is changing hands so fast constantly with updates in milliseconds, ECC memory is hugely important to them. Don't get me wrong, even if you've got a bunch of home movies and photos and stuff, it's not the end of the world for you, but you might have a bunch of zip folders, you might have a bunch of RAR folders. You could have a bunch of folders where every single bit can count. So it might apply to you as well, but mainly financial institutions or any institution where large amounts of data that's made up of hundreds, thousands, millions of tiny packets are exchanged very frequently you know, within very small spaces of time. And that is what ECC memory is. Just think of it as parity. And that is a crude analogy, I'm aware of that. There are There is more to it, but the big rule of thumb, remember that ECC is the equivalent to RAID. It is that extra bit of parity that's lumped onto every bit of data being handed back and forth, and therefore double checking and repairing errors without you even knowing. But if you, you can maintain logs, you can go into BIOS on computers, or you can do checks within your NAS, but let ECC do its thing. It does the job. So if you are interested in learning more about NAS and all the minutiae of data storage, subscribe to the channel. Chuck me a like if you found this helpful because it keeps the channel going, keeps me going, and maybe keeps a roof on here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to NAS Compares, and I'll see you next time.